And that's how our life is today. We can still follow God's command, still follow God, and yet we can still have a storm that comes our way. We must be an expert at handling certain storms. Certain, we, can't, we may be an expert at handling certain situations and certain storms because we're familiar with them. If something happens, we know how to combat it. But if God can send us a storm which we are not familiar with in our lives, but the lesson is not in how many storms or when the storm comes. The lesson and the test of faith is in how we handle the storm. How we confess the need for God. How we endure the storm. How we trust the storm and trust, trust God no matter how bad it looks. So let's turn to Isaiah 41 verse 10. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. It works, people. It works. Isaiah 41, verse 10. And it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Anytime you're in trouble, anytime I feel doubt, I always love coming to this verse because it always like a, it's like caffeine or something. It boosts me up. It boosts up my spirit because we have to remember whose we are. We are children of God. Therefore, there is no need to doubt. There's no need to fear because we are God's handpicked. We are God's chosen people, a people set apart, apart to do his holy work. So, yes, there will be storms, but remember that God is with us still. So let's go back into the story. So we have some physically and mentally tired disciples in the midst of a storm. And now they have just seen a figure walking on the sea. This is like a typical horror movie where it's all pitch black dark and stuff is happening, the storm's happening, and maybe there's like a streak of lightning and they see this figure on the sea. Don't know about you, but that is a scary moment. So I understand why they were fearful. So some were probably fearing for their lives at this point because they didn't know whether or not they would actually live to see the other side of where they were supposed to get to. And we have to realize that when we're most tired, when we're most mentally sad or exhausted, that's when our biggest storms or issues can come. When we are physically and mentally exhausted, somehow another issue seems to just pop up from nowhere and be the icing on the cake. You don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Maybe you're doing both at the same time. But again, it is how you handle the situation. So the disciples see a figure, they're out on the sea, and the figure walks to them and says, be of good cheer, it is I. Or in layman's term, it's me, why are y'all so afraid? So Jesus is a distance away, and Peter says, Lord, if it be thou bid, be, bid thee come unto thee on the water. And then when Jesus said come, Peter came out of the boat and just walked to Christ. It's time for us to walk out onto the water. To step out on faith. To recognize and know that Jesus in our, is in our lives so that he can lead us and he can guide us. See, Peter, Peter heard God's, Jesus' voice and it stirred up a bit of hope inside of him. Peter wanted to be saved from the storm, from the danger. Peter never said, Jesus never said, guys, it's me, Jesus, you know. He said, it is I. What does that tell us? We must be able to know the voice of the Lord. We must be able to distinguish what voice is God and what voice is not God. And that will tell us who we need to follow. Because some, remember, Satan is not just some ugly big monster. He's very slick. He's very sly. Probably him. He was most beautiful, right? So temptation comes in all forms. Not just some big ugly thing with two horns and a tail. So we must be able to tune everything out and focus on his word. Focus solely on Jesus. Be like the horse in the race with the blinders on. See, no one but Jesus. So Peter is walking on water, but then what does he do? He takes his eyes off of Jesus and he begins to sink. Peter gets distracted by the storm, 
by the wind and the thunder and the lightning. There can be so many distractions in our daily lives that can cause us to fix our, take our focus off of Jesus. And these distractions can lead us away from the power of God into our own problems. So we can make the lesser power of problems and distractions take up more of our attention. This is one of the reasons the disciples were on the boat in the first place. Remember, they were becoming distracted with the things and the ideas of the world. The idea of making Christ king instead of focusing and trusting and following Jesus. When we step out on faith and when we get distracted by the things of this life, we must cry out to Jesus so that he can save us. Even if you have a moment where your eyes are not on Jesus, remember what Peter did. He cried to the Lord saying, Lord, save me. And the Lord saved him. Peter's prayer was all of three words. If it was longer, I'm pretty sure Peter would be at the bottom of the sea at this point. When you pray to God, it does not have to be long, everlasting, or using big words. Especially if those aren't the words you commonly use. <laughs> Don't try to make up words. We we'll see you. We have dictionaries and cell phones now. We can, can look them up. Prayer is a conversation. It is literally you talking to God. So it doesn't have to be on your knees. Yes, people have a designated room for prayer. I understand that. But you can be at work saying, Lord, I thank you that I did not get into an attitude with this customer, Jesus. Thank you for having me keeping my cool. You are great. You are awesome. I work in retail. So one of my prayers is, oh, Lord, she put all the clothes on a hanger. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She understands. She understands how to use the coupons because that's another big thing. Thank you, Lord. See, it's, it's just a simple talking to God. Amen. Oh, that car did not swipe me when he was driving crazy. Lord, I thank you because you know I don't have any enough money to fix a car right now. I thank you. It's just like, oh, thank you, Lord, for having the bus come on time so I don't have to stand in the rain, the sleep, the snow. Simple prayers just like that. God, you know you're good. And you don't have to be all loud and running up and down CTA red line saying this loudly. You can just be in your quiet space in your mind. Amen. With your eyes closed. They may think you're sleeping, but you're talking to God. So just like how your parents are able to understand you when you talk to them. So my kids, just this I like how your parents are able you're able to hear what your parents are saying and you can talk to your parents. That's exactly how you guys can talk to God. Jesus always is able to understand you when you talk to him. So Jesus' presence helped in two ways. It helped them deliver, it was from the deliverance of fear from the disciples, because remember they were scared, they were tired, they were exhausted, and it also calmed the storm. You see, the storm ceased when Jesus entered the ship, and that is the way we receive our deliverance. We cannot be delivered until we allow Jesus in. Remember, he says, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. So unless we, re we receive him, he is unable to save us. Unless we give up, unless we submit unto Christ, he cannot save us. You can't, you can't be uh, trapped in the sea and you're, and you're just locked up like this. It doesn't work, right? How can you float on the sea? You have to throw your head back, arms out on your sides, and you're just floating. That's how you're able to float on the sea. And that's how we can be. If we're locked up and we're thrashing about, we're just going to sink even further. So remember that Jesus should be our first refuge and our only refuge in time of need. Sometimes we have a tendency to doubt Jesus. We trust in things. We trust in our intelligence, our money, our influences, our connections, and our skills more than we do the Son of God. And that, that, I can understand that. I won't say I obviously believe in it because I don't. But I understand it because it's things we can see. It's things we can touch. They're all tangible. Jesus was placed on a time limit. We, sometimes we place Jesus on a time limit. We say, look here, Lord. If you don't do this in five minutes, I'm going to do something else. Because I don't know what you're doing up there, but I need this handled and I need this handled now. We cannot place Jesus on a time limit. If Jesus does not handle, sometimes, yes, if we take, we can take problems in our own hands if we 
uh, if we think that Jesus doesn't handle our problems in a certain time. Jesus could have calmed that storm any time he wanted to. But he did it on his own time. When did he do it? When he was on the boat. When he, when they, the disciples allowed Jesus to come in. That that's when they received deliverance. Jesus does not always remove the storms from our lives. But he can show up and help us walk through them. All we need to do is trust in Jesus. To step off of the boat. Out of the safety of our own little world and enter into his presence. When we are willing to leave the safety of the boat and come to Jesus, we can find strength for every trial. We can find faith for every storm. We can find courage for every conflict. But we must remember that all God has promised to us is available to us if we come out of the boat. So, in this story, where was Jesus? Was he in the boat with the disciples? Was he fearful and afraid of the storm? Even in this story, he was not sleeping. No, Jesus was right there in the midst of the storm. Yes. And that is how it is when we are in situations and storms in our life. Remember that Jesus says he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. He is right there in the midst of our situation. It is up to us to look out for him and to turn to him for safety and instruction. Obedience to God is a choice. It is not something that's forced upon us. We have to remember that with God, all things are possible. And remember that God can make the impossible possible. He was the one that turned water into wine to raise up the dead. That's what Jesus can do. And it can only be lived by the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to look away from every other thing that can so easily beset us. Everything that takes us away from spending time with God, we need to eliminate it from our lives. Remember, I asked the question, if it doesn't bring God glory, if it doesn't give him honor, if it doesn't give you, get you closer to him, it needs to be, it needs, you need to get rid of it. And if you can't, obviously you cannot do it by yourself, but you can pray to God for help. And don't continue in sin that grace may abound. The Bible says, no, don't do that. So we are in a world today where we see the waves rolling. This is the time we need to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. So in your time of darkness, in your time of storm, remember that Jesus says, I am the Messiah. I am the bread of life. I am from above. I am the light of the world. I am before Abraham was. I am eternal. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the son of God. I am the resurrection and life. I am the Lord and master. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. I am Alpha and Omega. I am first and the last. Do not forget, never forget how God has delivered you from your past. How he was able to perform miracles in your life. When you step out on faith, remember to keep your eyes solely fixed on him. And that includes my college students, that includes my grade school students, that includes my high school students, that includes the grown folks who forgot what school looked like. Allow the things of this world to grow strangely dim. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Get off the boat and walk on the water to Jesus. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. If you are here today and you would like to know Jesus for the pardon of your sins, if you believe that he died for you, if you believe that he is the Son of God, that he is the only true way to heaven, you can accept Jesus now into your life. You can come to the front and one of the ministers can pray for you.